Welcome to the Visa Halftime Report. Visa, everywhere you want to be. Hey guys, welcome to the Visa Halftime Report. We got quite a lot of things to share with you. These words the MTA back with you once again. First of all, I did mention earlier in the brand announcement that the Purple Line first train is done. It's finished completely on the exterior, that is not the interior. I mean, and the Purple Line will be open to riders until next two years or three years, 2022 or 2023. The first of what will be 26 Purple Line trains finished, has finished assembly at its, at its factory in Elmira, New York. And for the record, assembly doesn't mean the train could carry passengers today. Software probably has not been installed yet, and at the very least, the train will have to go through a rigorous safety testing phase. And the inside, it's still in a factory wrapper, so we'll take a look at the exterior and interior. Here's the exterior here. Kind of looks like a new, what, what, what could you say, like a Type 6 Portland Max Transit train? But the inside, you can see there's pretty much nothing in there. Let me show you in just a minute. Here it is right there. Ready or not, serious progress is going to be so amazing to see in the long run. But that's the, but hey, that's the first Purple Line train coming up to the, the South Bay area. But what if there could be a Purple Line between Bethesda and Tysons? Although the Purple Line between the Bethesda and New Carrollton isn't expected to open until late 2022, transit advocates frequently, frequently talk talked about the possibility of extending it to Tysons and the Purple Line is the area's first major circumferential transit project and expect to have high ridership that connects a series of daily space and job centers and residential areas and extensions that will benefit through, from running from through running to these areas. And the most common proposed extension for the Purple Line is from Bethesda to Tysons Corner. Intuitively, this is the most obvious target for an extension. Tysons has the largest concentration of jobs in the region outside the, of downtown DC by a factor or two, making it a major commuting destination. And while the Silver Line does connect it to downtown DC and Reston, a circumferential correction, connection would make it more readily accessible to suburban commuters. And the large impact from jobs in Titans Quarter is a major contributor con contributor to the east-west jobs imbalance that plays a significant role in the region's congestion. And in areas as far east as Greenville, a meaningful percentage of workers commute to jobs in the Tysons. However, the heavy congestion on the American Legion Bridge and the difficulty of getting the Tysons by transit from Maryland means that fewer workers in the Tysons line um, live in Maryland than Northern Virginia, even though the Maryland border is only three miles away from that place. A good transit connection between Tysons and Maryland would help reduce travel times, and unlike proposals to add more lanes to the American Legion Bridge or to add, build an outer beltway crossing up river, it would do so without dumping more cars onto the region's highways. And Bethesda Purple Line Station could be transit points of red line passengers coming in from Montgomery County densely built up I-270 corridor. Uh, with other tra different transfer points everywhere the Purple Line intersects Metro. And difficulties for Purple Line and, and Tyson's Corner but, uh, transit line, there, there are some difficulties over there. And unsurprisingly though, the significant benefits to a Bethesda Tyson's Corner rail link will come across significant costs. Um, among the multiple difficulties, one bureau bureaucratic and one geographic hurdle stand out right now. And the bureaucratic hurdle is that the Purple Line is not a WMATA project. It's built by Maryland Transit Administration. And it's being built under a 30-year build and operate public-private partnership. And extending an MTA project into Virginia would require significant coordination between state and local agencies, plus a private company operating the line would presumably require significant financial support from the Virginia taxpayers. And how would Maryland, how would Maryland and Virginia split the costs to build and operate the line? And would that arrangement apply to the new portion or the or to the entire line? So here's two stations right, here, two routes right now to um uh have come up with a solution for the purple line here. You can see here Bethesda's one of the points here. You got Bradley Boulevard. That could be one stop. River Road would be a proposed stop if it was that way. What's the length to go one way to the um, further west, Georgetown Pike South, and they'll meet up at Tyson's Corner here. And we got McLean Old Chain Bridge Road and Sally Headquarters, which is also questionable with Purple Line to go there. The geographic hurdle is perhaps more formidable. Bethesda and Tyson's Corner are nearly 10 miles apart from each other and separated by a large stretch of low density land, much of it filled with expensive single family homes. It also contains the Gorge of the Potomac River, which is the National Park Service controls. 
unlike the currently under construction purple line, the cost of assignment connecting these two sites will have to be justified almost entirely by ridership between these two termini. And it's very unlikely that the National Park Service will allow a new bridge across the Potomac, not to mention the, the parallel Clara Barton and George Washington Memorial Parkways, but also NPS land. And that means the Purple Line would either need to cross the Potomac in a deep bored tunnel or go on an adjacent to the American Legion Bridge, even though those options would add significant costs to the project. The shortest, pl the shortest plausible route for the Purple Line to Tyson's from Bethesda is probably to continue along the Montgomery County owned Capitol Crescent Trail, which is the former CSX Georgetown branch line right, right away from Bethesda's River Road, which it crosses near West Bar West Park. Then we're going to a deep bore tunnel near service the, near the intersection of Dolly of Dolly Madison Boulevard, which is Virginia Route 123, and Virginia 193, and continuing the median of Virginia 123 Tyson's Corner. And that would be eight and a half miles long, and more than three miles of it would need to be in deep bore tunnel under the Potomac. So here is where the extension is. You can see these two routes could possibly cross the tunnel, and and this, this and again these two routes would be the more effective outcomes. And the tunnel is kind of a deep river, so they have to go pretty. So the tunnel has to be pretty deep in order for the to operate nice and easy. And based on the depth, and speaking of the depth of the river in bedrock, a subway tunnel on the Potomac would need to be about three hundred and fifty feet deep. Assuming the tracks slope at the grade of 4%, maximum sustained grade recommended for most light rail lines, a depth of 350 feet implies a mile and three quarter tunnel on each side of the river, for a total tunnel length of three and a half miles. And the western portal will, western portal will, will just be west of the intersection of Dolly and Madison Boulevard and Virginia 193, and the eastern portal is just west of the West Bar development on River Road. Unfortunately, this tunnel would long had a tunnel, a tunnel this long would really would add significantly to the cost of the project, probably to the order of several billion dollars of the, uh, for the underground section of the route. If the deep bore tunnel option is selected, the majority of the route will still be built above ground. On the Virginia side of the tunnel, the line will run for three and a half miles along Dolly Madison Boulevard, and for most of the section, Dolly Madison Boulevard is five lanes wide, with two travel lanes in each direction and a center lane consisting of a median broken by left turn lanes. It's not clear though that there's enough space to add median running light rail without removing one of the four travel lanes convin and convincing VDOT to remove a travel lane. Well, basically, the Virginia Department of Transportation to remove a travel lane from a major uh, arterial that it currently had rates as having a level of service of D, which could be very difficult. On the other hand, running a mixed traffic for the half of the for, for half the route would certainly significantly increase travel times between Bethesda and Tyson's Corner. So it, would, so it is probably wise to push for a dedicated right-of-way portion of the line, even though it requires significant takings. And the ups an upside to this route is that it would allow service to basically go to the small commercial district in McLean and the interse intersection of Don Madison Boulevard and Old Chain Bridge Road. The district is fairly small with with between 3,000 and 4,000 jobs and a bit more than a thousand residents within walking distance of a potential station. However, it has the largest concentration of jobs and residents between the Titans and the Potomac, with the, with the exception of the CIA headquarters. And while this route really um, would also uh, has just have a CIA headquarters, it's not clear that a station could be built close enough to be useful for commuters given the CIA's significant security concerns and large size of the site. And such a station would have to be built in tunnel, significantly increasing costs compared to the uh, service station and tunneling in the vicinity of, of CIA headquarters would likely pose its own legal and logistical difficulties. And what about the detour to the American Legion Bridge? If the costs of the three and a half mile tunnel and the difficulties of tunneling near CIA headquarters are considered too great, the alternative would be a detour to the American Legion Bridge to, bridge to cross the Potomac above ground. The bridge-based option would instead need to run north in the median river of the road, in the median of river road from west parts of the Beltway, cross the Potomac on the parallel of the Beltway, and just and then follow the Beltway to Tyson's Corner. That would be over 11, just over 11 miles long, but would avoid the need for deep bore tunneling. And however, while this section of Bradley Boulevard has three lanes in each direction and could easily support median running rail, both Goldsboro and North 
southern section of Goldsboro Road and the northern section of Bradley Boulevard past this intersection with Goldsboro Road have only a single lane route in each direction. And this shortcut would also eliminate the station at West Bar, which is an area that Montgomery County is looking to redevelop. And that is the only major cluster of density between Bethesda and the Potomac River. A route of using the Wilson Bridge would replace the difficulty of building in the Dolly and Madison Boulevard median with a three and a half mile segment in the median of the River Road, which has somewhat of a wider of wider right of way, and also eliminate the two potential stops at Old Chambers Road and CIA headquarters. And then by adding two and a half miles to the route, and giving the Purple Line's estimate average speed about 15 miles an hour, the detour would likely add about 10 minutes to the half hour trip between Bethesda and the Indictment's Corner. So here are the benefits to all this. In 2016, construction costs of the Purple Line were estimated at $2.4 billion. And the above ground portion of the tunnel route would be about five miles long, roughly a third of the length of the now under construction Purple Line. It wouldn't all it, it, would all, it also would not require tunneling. The under construction Purple Line has a tunnel in the vicinity of Long Ridge and hopefully involve the minimal right of way acquisition. So a cost of eight hundred million dollars for construction for the above ground portion of the line might not be unreasonable. However, the cost of the above ground portion of the tunnel route would have to be added to the several billion dollar cost of the tunnel portion of the route. Although longer involving construction of a major bridge, the American Mission Bridge with detour route would not require tunneling. And that might come out at one and a half billion dollars for the whole line. So in the long term, despite the bureaucratic difficulties at high cost, a tunnel route for a purple line extension to Titans may be the best option, especially if the current efforts to redevelop Titans as a walkable, transit oriented city payoff. Although the cost of purple line, extension, purple line extension to Tyson's Corner would be quite high, the benefits might well be larger. Tyson is one of the region's largest community destinations, with about 90,000 jobs within a one mile radius. As the Surf Line extends further west of Reston and Dallas and Loudoun County, a Tyson's Bethesda Rail Link would connect these areas, each with large numbers of residents and increasing numbers of transit accessible jobs. The dense employment and residential clusters along the Purple and Red Line in Maryland. So the next installation in the series, we're going to um, point out other suburb, suburb to transit, suburb to suburb transit options from Northern Virginia and the Purple Line. So there's a lot to discuss here about this, and there's more plans to be coming up. And now tunnel congestion. What can Metro do? They plan to make new lines to address the congestion, but we want to find out what's realistic. So Metro planners have come up with six ideas to address the congestion the Roslyn Tunnel on the Blue, Orange, and Silver Lines, but many fixes, including the rerouting or creating new lines, would be the multi-billion dollar deals that would take 25 years to execute. And so Cheyenne Sh Kanan said this, it's a, it's a full-blown effort to put everything on the table and decide what direction they're going to go in. But some of the proposals in the Blue, Orange, and Silver line, line capacity and reliability study are ambitious. One would involve creating a new Silver Line al alignment that would branch off from the Orange and Blue Lines Instead, of, and instead go north or south through Columbia Pike and then to DC. Another calls for a second tunnel near Roslyn and running the blue line through Georgetown to Union Station or up to Friendship Heights. So think about a blue line at Friendship Heights. Metro lists these types of projects as high cost with 20 to 25 year horizons and more detailed cost estimates are coming. For context, building the line cost nearly seven billion dollars. So why is this a problem in the first place? The goal is to address future population in the growth, but the, also the fixed train congestion and reliability issues of today. If the issue arises on the on one line, it can affect the other and two and create cascading problems to the entire east-west corridor. And some may question um, for the need for added capacity when ridership has been down. Metro has had its lowest ridership in 20 years. Though so it recently has trended up a little bit. And Metro planners say that the system becomes more reliable and as more people come to the region, the need will be there. And Mark Phillips, is, who's a project manager, said um, that the, the crowding that they already have in the orange, blue, and silver lines is going to get worse. The strategy may be a 20 to 25 year horizon to plan and build, so they need to start thinking about it now. And they can't wait till they hit a particular threshold and say, oh, now we have an emergency. They need to do something about it. So, uh, between 2018 right now, there has been about maximum um, chronic standees 
is on the scale of the most heinous to extremely crowded. And in 2040, they predict that there's going to be some extremely crowded um, um, stations as well, and trains. Metro has been looking at the overcrowding problem for more than a decade, especially has a silver line opening. Only 26 trains run through the tunnel per hour, but the transit agency never came up with a plan that had public stakeholder import or stakeholder input or one that had a thorough cost benefit analysis. That changed with this two year study. Metro will study each option further, get public input, and narrow down the list by February. And the study should wrap by the end of 2020. So here's some concepts with Metro of Metro's explanations. Here's the first one, turnbacks. So instead of having trains go all the way to Vienna on the orange line, they can either turn back at Minnesota Avenue, Roslyn, um, Boston, East Falls Church, and West Falls Church get like displayed over here. So there's five different turnbacks for the trains to um can do here to alleviate the tunnel crowding. And you may remember the red line turnbacks that rose on track on several spring stations, and or the yellow line would turn back in Mount Vernon Square that was recently eliminated. Not as many riders were taking the service to end the line end of the line so the trains would turn around to serve more trips in the core. And this concept would be similar to that. Metro would install pocket tracks and turnovers and crossovers in certain areas so that the silver line trains could turn back at certain areas. This would mean fewer trains through the Roslyn Tunnel, which could improve reliability. The key question is, do you need to run the train all the way from the eastern side of the silver line all the way to the western side each and every time? That's what Ken had said. That could limit some one-seat rides from the silver line to the core of DC and beyond. It's the least expensive option, and it only takes five years to finish. But how is, here's a second concept. A blue line only in Virginia. That's right. So from Roslyn in the Pentagon to um, Franconia, it would, I mean, this option does create a new red line station and the blue line would only run back from Springfield to Roslyn and not the Royal Town Center. It could also build a connection with the orange and silver lines to create one seat ride between Titans, Roslyn, Boston, and Boston, Pe Pentagon, Crystal City National Airport, and Vancouver Springfield. And they could run more trains in the blue, orange, and silver line, but running more trains through the Roslyn Tunnel, through the Roslyn Tunnel, it, it means that way, but I bet. It also means that blue line riders would also have to transfer the transfer to another line to get to DC or Maryland. The cost would be in the middle of all the options and take five to ten years. And another third concept is to create a new blue line. So one could run through the red line and into Prince George's County, and one could near to Tenley go near Tenley Town and Friendship Heights. You may have heard you may have um heard about this option with the Washington with you heard about this um, option before, I don't know if you, actually, if you did really. It would be a multi-million dollar project to build a new tunnel under the Potomac River and move the blue line to a new configuration. And that would involve the line either going through an area north of downtown, connecting the area's most used station, which is Union Station and beyond, or it snake up north through Glover Park at the cathedral area. And this would add capacity to the region and also allow more trains to run on the orange and silver line. And one thing Mark Phillips had to say about the proposed lines the very high level conceptual desire lines. So that doesn't mean there are specific corridors etched in stone. And Metro created those ideas by looking at riders' trip or destination population and employment densities, projected growth, and commercial areas, major bus routes, and other patterns. And that would take 20 to 25 years and have a high cost, according to Metro. Now, if you guys know the CTA, the Chicago style Metro, that leads to the fourth concept, which is creating a downtown loop like this. See, the yellow and blue line will connect in between. Yeah, so as you can see, this will connect between Pentagon areas and go all the way around the blue, orange, silver lines. And yeah, cut in between the red line too. This was previously studied as a way to connect one the one, connect many of the regions and downtowns. They didn't throw the concept out yet, but in the current process, it's important to make sure that they formally vetted it. And something that has been proposed and they'll have to evaluate to see whether or not it continues as a viable as a viable concept. And it will connect Crystal City, the Capitol Riverfront, Noma, and the West End, and all areas that grew up and are on the story downtown. It will also add new lines and provide relief at Union Station. And that also separates the yellow line from the green line and the blue line and the orange and silver, meaning more capacity. It will also create a new tunnel, but again, 20 25 years with high costs. And here's the one that I mentioned earlier, moving the silver line north. So we can have, instead of having one going all the way to Dulles, 
well, starting at low, instead of starting at lower down center, it, why not have one? Why not have a northern silver line? Instead of the silver line meeting up with the orange line, it would, it would split up. Meeting up with the orange line, it's going to split off and have its own line to itself. And the silver line can break off at McLean and go north through Friendship Heights, connect onto the Georgia Avenue green and yellow line, then Rhode Island Avenue and continue on. It would add a ton of new capacity and connections, but that option may be too far. But that option may be too far north to address the needs of the Roslyn Tunnel. But there are three options here. You can have one run from Union Station in Prince George's County and have another one aligned close to that. Go all go all the way up to or connect to the Union Station areas and then go split up in Fairfax County or go one or go further up north and then go into Rowland Avenue to Friendship Heights back in back in Montgomery County and into Virginia to address the tunnels of Roslyn there. And it could replicate it could replicate it could rec replicate some of the blue line concepts and break off at West Falls and go through Arlington and then onto Dupont Circle and then over in Square Union Station and beyond. And they've been dealing with that fact mul the fact that multiple lines track of tra share track infrastructure they call it transit, they call it interlining from what Cannon said. And it presents a host of challenges. And we're asking what happens if we separate those lines entirely and give them their own running way. It could resolve that issue at Russell Tunnel but also give no, new opportunities to provide transit access and traffic relief. Again, 20 to 25 years with high costs. And, but there's also another way that the Silver Line, so another way the Silver Line can go. You can also do uh, a Southern so a southern Silver Line like this. So you can say, you can go into Lower Prince George's County and then go to the Pentagon and National Airport and stuff like that. Instead of meeting up with the Orange Line, you'll split up and head south instead. And this is the last concept. It's the same idea as concept 5, but it heads through the Columbia Pike area, which has a streetcar project which was previously cancelled, then it goes through Southwest DC or south to National Airport. There's a significant amount of, tra of transit ridership today on Columbia Pike. It's one of the busiest bus corridors. For pedestrian buffs, they can go back to the seat of Columbia Pike and originally and, or, and originally look as look this as looked at as, as a uh, potential metro rail line. A lot of history, a lot of transit facts that might suggest this is a good place to look. So they are looking at it. Again, 20 to 25 years with high costs. And what's realistic about this? All these plans will cost billions, involve decades of planning, input, and construction. And Cannon said that the engineering solutions like tunnel boring machines can dig through, can dig, that can dig underground without tearing up the street beneath the buff, may help some of the, overcome some of the construction challenges. And the biggest challenge here really is deciding on what path they want to pursue on. There's so many potential solutions and not any of them is going to be 100% perfect for every stakeholder. As far as the costs go, Cannon said that's up to public and funding jurisdictions to decide what they want. Phillips says for now, they're just trying to give very, very loose, low, medium, or high costs. In January, February in 2020, when they start to narrow the list, that's when they start trying to attach a high level cost estimate, but not now. These big build options will maybe to overkill to address an issue that could be solved by other smaller efficiencies. Metro's also Metro's also looking at adding more pocket tracks and crossovers to provide more, more flexibility and more reliability, dur reliability during incidents. So yeah, you can hear more rumbles in more areas. <laughs> you can also reduce the number of seats on future trains to allow more room to pack people in. This could make new entrances to crowded stations using more modern signaling and train control to, that would allow trains to run more closely together, but that would still be costly and time consuming. Or they could run more parallel bus service. I was pointing out eight car trains restoring automatic train operation which creates a more efficient system and open gangway trains where you can walk from one end to the other can seat more people. And public input can be given in person or online. And they're hoping they're holding four open houses in December and Arctic staff will give presentations at five and six thirty PM. The only and there isn't really isn't one really there's They've been pretty much doing this at the Foggy Bottom Station, Addison Road Station, Tyson's Corner Station, Virginia Square, and even outside the metro at George Mason University, George Washington University, St. Margaret's Church's Omega Room, and Courtyard by Marriott and Tyson's and McLean, the ballroom, the ballroom in that hotel. So yeah, there's a lot of planning to go for, there's a lot of future planning. And hopefully I'll spend this thing that we know for sure is on the way before this dinner. Thank you guys, thank you guys for watching this video, Hat Down Report, and we're so for watching all of 2019 video. I hope to see you guys in 2020.
Tschüss.